Hacha everybody, how's it going? This is your bias when you're day. Coming to you guys with another video for my YouTube channel. And this is an interview with my godson, Felipe Flores Ortiz, who is Iyawo Odedekan at this moment, who just got initiated a while ago. And so he is sitting behind the camera, so you guys are going to be able to hear him. But you're going to be seeing me asking him questions. So anyways, hi Yawo, how are you today? Hello everyone, I'm doing fine. How do you feel finally being on the YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually uh, pretty cool and excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've been trying to make a little interview for quite a while as of now. So, okay, so Yawo, tell us a little bit about yourself, like, you know, your, your name, your status at this moment or your your title at this moment mm -hmm. and what you're focusing on religiously so um as Felino says uh my birth name is felipe flores um but i'm currently going by obviously yawo just because i went through the ceremony last uh summer um i'm currently focusing on getting to know that my oceans that i have received getting to know airways, um, getting to know all the keys, just like things that will make me useful for the ile mm -hmm. in so the long run. Okay. Yep. So, Yawo, who are you crowned to? I, I am them. crowned to Ochozi. That mm -hmm. is my crown. And my dear mother is Oya. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so what would you say, Yawo, that is one of your favorite things about the religion? Um, my favorite thing about the religion is that we actually get answers from our deities. Um, yes, there is a lot of spirituality, but when I, we want something concrete, we can go ahead and directly ask and receive an answer, which um, other religious practices do not. Um, that's my favorite part of the religion. My second favorite part of the religion will definitely be the history and the development of it because as we know it's actually uh quite an old religion uh now in not necessarily like la de ocho or lukumi but the the deities we worship have existed for millennia right it's, it's one of the older oldest uh religions uh or at least the archaeological record would say that it was africa um, so I love, I'm a historian, so I just love the history and the development of the religion in all its different forms. Mm -hmm. And what would be your least favorite thing that you would say about the religion? I mean, yeah. So, <laughs> my least favorite thing of the religion would be the lack of spirituality of modern um, Olorishas. Um, so for one hand, this is a religion that is really orthopractic, which means that we actually perform actions and words that will denote that we are part of the religion and that we're doing specific ceremonies or whatever, right? But because we are lately have become so orthopractic, um, um, this has to get done this and this and this and this manner, the spirituality might have been taken out of the religion. Uh, stories that we might hear from our Lagba Lagbas uh, or our Alaguas, we don't hear any more of those things happening. And I, it is my opinion that it is because we have lose a lot of the spirituality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what would you consider a... Tell me another way that you feel there has been a lack in, like, besides just a practice or... Um, mainly in... Uh, it's my criticism that the idea of you receive ochas and then you put them in your canastillero, you put them in your bookshelves and then you leave those shrines dusty and dry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that is, you can see when you have something like that. You, you receive Oshun and you haven't touched her just in your Osha verde to move her to mm -hmm. the throne. Mm -hmm. That is lack of spirituality, in my opinion. You know, we all have different opinions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Yawo, what would you say um, your favorite Orisha is besides maybe Ochozi? Who would you crown to? Okay, would Ochozi be your favorite Orisha or another one? I mean, I love Ochozi. Ochozi is obviously top one. Um, I just love them all. Of course, Ochozi, I, uh, I, I am obsessed with anything that has to do with Ochozi, with, with the Ode uh, society in, in Nigeria, in what is now Nigeria. Um, 
with how uh, Ochoz is represented in Candomblé, for example, all, all his different uh, manifestations there. But there is the other Orisha that I, if not counting Ochozi, will be Olokun. Mm -hmm. I've been obsessed with Olokun since I've received him. Um, he has given me anything. He is... And I constantly clean his pot, um, put offerings. I'm definitely not afraid of touching him, mm -hmm. uh, which I know many people in the religion are, are afraid of approaching that Osha. I think it's a respect that then turns into fear right. that a lot of people have. But there's right. a difference between approaching it with respectfully and approaching it right. and not approaching it at all because of fear. Correct. Like, I wouldn't keep an Osha without tending it since the moment I receive it, you know? Like, just receive it, put it in his corner, and then never touch him again. Mm -hmm. I just can't see myself doing that. And a local is an Orisha that I constantly, you know, go to us. And after Ita, which was, that feeling was validated by Ita, I definitely will even go more. I have mm -hmm. him looking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got a few things to do with the local, which yes. I'm excited about, but those are <laughs> private. Mm -hmm. But either way, either way. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, is there any particular Orisha that you do not want to deal with or that you <laughs> maybe don't want to receive or you feel like so i want all the auditions that i can receive because i believe that the worship has to be maintained um but an orisha that i do plan on waiting a little bit um is nana buruku mm -hmm. i will wait and why do you say that you will wait on her? Uh, for what I've heard, her ceremony is quite intense. And I do have a respect to her being such an old Orisha, mm -hmm. such a powerful and high-regarded Orisha. So I really would like to be a little bit more older and mature in the religion before receiving that before energy. Before receiving her, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, no, I mean, I love Nana Wuruku. I definitely think she's a very interesting entity and i'm excited to make my next project for her which mm -hmm. should be pretty exciting for me but <laughs> all right so yeah well, what do you say or what do you consider that your niche within the religion might be like beadwork ocha work plants sewing do you are you you're still finding yourself out or do you think you're going to have a specific um Focus. So it's good to learn a little bit of everything, but of course, like, you can't be an expert on everything. I beat and I beat for me. I don't beat for people. Um, I I just enjoy it doing projects for my Orisha, but it kind of takes me a while. If someone asks me to do something, it kind of takes me a while. Mm -hmm. um, so beadwork definitely won't be my niche. Um, tool making, it just looks too complicated, so that will definitely not be my niche. Um, I really love the historical research of it, so, and that's something that I do as a profession, so I will definitely use my training for that in the religion, and I love Orikis, so mm -hmm. I will definitely want to learn as much songs as I can. I love Ewe too, so I think between Ewe, history, and Orikis, that should be quite enough. So you're gonna eventually, hopefully, maybe write a book on Ocha, or... I mean, to that. I mean, I wouldn't mind it, but of course, I would definitely would like to. I think there's so much about the Odes, about the hunter society and the hunter orishas that we in Lokumi don't uh, don't know, don't fully mm -hmm. understand as mm -hmm. as well as they do in Candomblé or as well as they do in um, some parts of West Africa. So if I were to write a book, it would definitely be on a Chelsea and all the others. Mm -hmm. I think that will be muchly necessary yeah. or very necessary. Okay, so what advice, since you're in a Yabo now and you're an adult, what advice would you give to people who are watching and listening and thinking about getting initiated at some point and going through the Yaboraje year? What have you found to be the easiest or the hardest, or what? How have you dealt with your yaguaraje so far? So the easiest way is to try to avoid um, getting yourself 
into a lot of this forums that exist. Um, they're just not productive through your yaburaje and you just you might just get heated and caught in discussions that are unnecessary. Um, don't be in, in la farandula. Don't be in the mm -hmm. don't try to be in the limelight. You know, have a group of friends which you can vent that are that are in the religion so they can understand. Um, but don't open yourself for everyone in those groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be yeah, private. So, yeah, a lot of times the groups do get a little messy or they get um, just with a lot of conflict. But that also is part that when you initiate, you should only be asking things from your elders and not things from the entire community because then that's where different opinions and practices and things come mm -hmm. into. And then especially when the person is in a yawal that they have to be learning not so much fighting their points mm -hmm. or whatever thing because at the end of the day it's still gonna it'll mm -hmm. shift things will shift because things keep shifting as the days go by also but you should be asking your elders so that's a good advice do you what do you find the hardest or the easiest the easiest and the hardest as I will? so the hardest thing as I will, I think because I've done it as an adult and I've done it after having studies and I've done it after you're getting a position outside in the in the uh, in the non-religious world the hardest thing can be uh, learning humility mm -hmm. and learning that when you begin this religion while you are still a human being and you are still a, a, a lawyer or a doctor or whatever you are outside this religion is hierarchical. It is. It will always be. And it's part of it and you have to embrace it. And I think that is the hardest thing. Uh, especially for us, you know, that have been uh, born and raised in modern society. Mm -hmm. uh, which our achievements in the non-religious world have so important. And uh, it, they are, you know, it takes hard work to achieve those mm -hmm. things. So it might be hard to then be infantilized in a way. Mm -hmm. I'm not condoning yeah, the infantilization. you go back to being a child. Right. When you restart religiously speaking, religiously you go speaking. back to being like a child. Or treated or thought of as, as a child. A child, but you're still a grown adult. Right. So that can be the hardest thing. People will say is the, the clothing is like the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the hardest thing is that. Like getting to your mindset that now you have to be more reserved because on the totem pole you are not the highest so you have to be careful how you s express yourself mm -hmm. but the easiest thing is the clothes mm -hmm. i'll have to wake up in the morning and like oh what am i gonna put today no i know i'm gonna put a white shirt white pants white shoes mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the first three months are obviously the hardest, and then by after yeah. that you become a little more liberated with the short sleeves. It can and, be. So, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But okay, that's good. Yeah, it was really easy for me mm -hmm. though, because mm -hmm. I I'm not a person that go out and drinking or a person that you know go clubbing every weekend. So mm -hmm. it, it, that has not been hard at all for me. It's like oh, I'm just be myself. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's during a pandemic, and everyone should mm -hmm. be locked mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. protecting themselves. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, well, what would be an advice that you would give to people that are coming into the religion? New people that are interested in Orisha, Ifa, African traditional religions. What advice would you give them? That's, that's kind of... So, you have to understand if you're coming... If you're looking at African uh, traditional religions, um, you need to, before you even contact anyone, you need to investigate as much as you can from the outside what the religion is about. Because they are, we're all different. Lukumi is not Fudum, uh, Fudu is not Candomblé, it's not 21 Divisions, it's not Hudu, it's not Ishe uh, Shalag uh, Baifa, it is. It's, it's its own thing. 
Um, and you might want to, let's say, oh, I like Oshum for X or Y reason that I've seen in the media, so I want to go into Lukumi, but maybe that's not the path that you've been called. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in any African, uh, African traditional uh, religion, investigate all of them. Because maybe you think because you saw, I don't know, Beyonce in yellow, you want to do Lukumi, but in reality, maybe you should do Candomblé. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you should do Ifa, the, like Isha Shalag by Ifa. Or maybe it's actually Fudum. It's not even mm -hmm. anything related to the Orishas. Mm -hmm. So just investigate because once you enter, it should be a lifetime commitment. Yeah. Not only when crowning, the moment that you, someone become your godparent, even if it's just your godparent for, you know, the Eleki ceremonies in our case in Lukumi, it should be a lifetime commitment. It should not be something that you do out of, uh, oh, it's so cool. It looks really cool from the outside. Let me go try it out. Mm -hmm. These are living traditions, but aside from the living traditions, these are, these are people's cultures. Yeah, it becomes a lifestyle. It mm -hmm. should become a right. lifestyle for you as a human being. Correct. It, 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 is, it is part of many cultures, you know. Mm -hmm. You are coming to Lukumi, you have to understand that it's an Afro-Caribbean tradition. It's not an African tradition is an Afro-Caribbean tradition that comes with its own cultural practices based on its history. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to embrace that. If you go to Candomblé, you have to understand that it's an Afro-Brazilian tradition that comes with its culture. Um, and that might be my best advice, is investigate all of the African tradition before hitting out someone for a reading. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what advice do you can you give or say to someone who's been in the religion for a long time? I think the the best advice is actually oh, the dogs are barking. Mm -hmm. The best advice is I think it oh, like you know the orishas give it to us is that the wisdom is spread around the world. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have been crowned 50 years, but maybe someone that's generally just a Yawo might have some knowledge that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Also, for all the all of us that we have just been crowned, yes, we might have access to a lot of more uh, books and a lot of more research, but that will never take uh, the experience, you know, the the place of experience. So we all have, we will always have to learn something from someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So be humble. Even be humble. Age. Humildad y paciencia. Humildad y paciencia. <laughs> mm -hmm. The lessons of the year. Yes. Humility and patience. <laughs> okay, Yao, so tell me what were you consider so far because you're still young in Ocha mm -hmm. or, in, or in your life, not just Ocha, but what spiritual experience have you had or that has touched you deep, deeply that you have had that has made you believe more? Or that you have had that has made you like be like wow, or you know what proof or what what have you? What do you consider a deep uh, experience? There are two. Okay. Uh, the first one is after I had a reading with you, uh, and certain things came out, whatever, and the Sorisha spoke strongly in that reading, right? So I go to a Guido on the other side of the no it wasn't a weird it was it was someone's ochas yeah it was someone's ochas all the way in california right and i was like you know plucking feathers or whatever and i guess the orisha manifested i first of all it felt you know strong like it, it's there's certain vibrations that you can feel um but when the orisha actually came to me you know you, you prostrate and they lift you Thus, words I started to came out of the Orisha that was manifesting, well, in that case, was Chango. Um, word by word, where what was said on a reading on Florida several months ago, and I, for a complete different person, people that are not even related, because mm -hmm. you know you have not, you haven't like really met that person, uh, mm -hmm. that person ever, in right? Physically, yeah. In physically, so that made me feel like, no, this is real. Mm -hmm. um, Orisha speak, Orisha talks, mm -hmm. and they confirmed. So that was like, oh. Divination is very interesting, and that's one of the things I like about divination. It's actually when something comes up for someone that 
I myself may be a little doubtful of, but I still say it to them. And then when it does happen to them, their confirmation back to me is always interesting as to, you know, because people doubt. And as human beings, we tend to doubt mm-hmm. certain things at certain times, but there is definitely always a proof of how right what was said was, yes. you know. So And was it was just, one? yeah, that was just amazing. I ended up crying like a little girl. And I loved it, though, because uh, it was like, okay, this is real. I mean, I always knew because, you know, that, that growing up in Puerto Rico, it's always not been close. Um, I have always, uh, have always been like Spiritista usually, so we have always been close to Spiritismo. And, of course, Santeria permeates uh, Puerto Rico, too. Uh, so, But that was beautiful. My second one was Mayocha. You know, um, so Mayocha is interesting because it's a chossy. And there is this whole mythology of what it needs to happen mm-hmm. in an Ochozi um, Ocha. Um, so, and there's always this fear, because um, there's always this fear that, oh, the Nisha can, sh- can change at the last minute, you know? And, uh, you know, some people doubt that I was, like, marked to the current Orisha just because, you know, I am a homosexual man being marked to a warrior Orisha, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of... Some people have weird ideas, let's just put it like that. So, first of all, came a well entrada and everything was like clear there that it was a Chelsea, right? But what was like a big confirmation for many people based on the mythology, and it's really funny, was the other medium while I was getting put in my, in my, in my gown. Um, the police just decided to come. And they just started knocking. And it was funny because Padrino just got so nervous. Um, but then, like, uh, I think uh, the Oba was like, well, it was a choice. It had to happen at some point. Yeah. So that's that was, like, a funny experience. But it's just like, oh, my God, this mythology actually makes sense, you know? And, it, you know, some people will say, well, it's just a coincidence. But if it is something that happens often, and if it's already this, like, urban legend, and people are expecting things to, things to happen... And they do happen. You 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 can't be so daft and just mm-hmm. like keep doubting, you know. Mm-hmm. So those are my two experiences. One was really really spiritual, and the other was spiritual but kind of funny yeah. in, in a way. Yeah, yeah. no, it should definitely manifest in different ways. And when it comes to a Chelsea, that's definitely the police coming to the house is definitely something that people hold in high regard. It doesn't always have to happen. It doesn't always happen. But there are certain, I guess, I don't know if pressure will be the right way to say the, the right word to use. But when you're crowning certain orishas, people do sometimes have certain expectations as to what should be happening around the time. Outside of our control, outside of the ritualistic control, like maybe things with the weather or things with other things or people or whatever that people may be like oh this happened well this is being done so that this is truly truly being done Mm -hmm. it's like manifestation physical world uh worldly manifestation that this Mm -hmm. spiritual thing is being done so right these are very cool experiences (laughs) yeah yes that was cool I Jesus. Yes, that was definitely a little freaky when it happened. <laughs> yeah. I was like, someone please. You just freak out. <laughs> someone please go tend to them. I'm dressing the animal. <laughs> but thankfully, um, my other godson went out and my goddaughter went out. Because my godfather and I both freaked out, but I was dressing him. So I was. Yeah, like, Padrino Tudo were running and hitting yes. people. <laughs> my Padrino went running. He was like, oh my God, no. And I was like, I'm dressing the Yabu. I can't go out. So one of you guys could deal with it. And they, they, they just spoke with them really quickly. And it was literally like a 10 second interaction. Right. But it was definitely very nice for right. it to manifest in that manner, considering that we were crowning um, Ochozi. Which obviously this gives me another video idea because I'm sure some people are going to ask what to expect when yeah, my ass yes. being crowned, what to expect when Obatala is being crowned, etc, etc. So either way, I'll keep that as a reminder for another video. So thank you for those experiences. I no problem, Marino. <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> with all of that being said, yeah, well, what parting words do you want to give to the community of Orisha overall? Just, everybody in general that may 
hear you or have something to say about what you have answered? Mm, I would just say that I appreciate your family of stone. Um, we don't get to choose who, where, what family we're born. Well, technically we do choose, but we are in auto, but we don't remember that. So we didn't technically show, you know, mm -hmm. the family in which we were born. But we choose our stone family. And if we choose these people, we need to learn to appreciate them as human beings and be as united. Um, I would like to return to that era in which there was this cabildos and there were like societies that help each other um that like golden age that we all read and talk about all the elders when they sit at the table i want i would like to see that i would like to not see facebook lives of dragging people um we need to los paños sucios se lavan en casa is what my mother taught me um a lot of our uh fights just divide the community too much when a, many things can be solved with an elder and one or two people mm -hmm. behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to go back to be a community because we are currently not a community. Mm -hmm. People come together, but there's still like levels of mm -hmm. separation Correct. when they're there. But hopefully it'll fix itself somehow okay. in whatever way and in whatever <laughs> manner. But yeah, no, I think, I do think that as a house, you should always be as comfortable with each other as possible, as comfortable with your elder as possible, and it should definitely be a lifelong commitment. So that's why I always say to people, get to know the person first, get to like them, honor them as a person to be like, okay, I like this person to hang out with them, and I can talk about whatever issues with them, and, and I can talk religious uh, religious issues with them too right. because a lot of times people if they just meet one person and they go off to do religious things and they never interact with the person and later on they find out they don't like the person right. as a person not as a priest they may not like them as a person and then that creates rift and then comes the house jumpings and stuff like that and everything. to be so, able to live in your god parents house for over a month and mm -hmm. be comfortable and with be it comfortable. <laughs> And make sure that you get along with a godparent and everything like that, because that's the person that is like dealing with your stuff too. Mm -hmm. Because it's a it's a it's a two way street. The godparent has to deal with all the issues and whatever's happening with the godchild, and the godchild has to deal with the stuff from the godparent and the teaching of the godparents too. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, yeah, well, thank you so much for this wonderful interview. Yeah, well, cannot be on camera now, but eventually in the future he will be <laughs> in another video. And I appreciate you taking the time to sit here for me to make another video for my YouTube channel. But um, Yavo lives in Arizona where my other godson lives. So there's an interview with him in another video. So if you guys need to contact Yavo or my other godson, I will put their information in the bottom of the, e of the video and in the description in case that anybody in Arizona needs a reading a contact or something and you guys can get in touch with them through those things but also look at the interview with uh, my godson Rick from Fung and um, that's for everybody that lives in that area Arizona and all those uh, states around there too so yeah well I thank you very much Good for problem. this video remember you guys you can follow me on social media on Facebook under Asia Bias on Instagram under Asilo Chunjayeo on my Snapchat Asilo Chunjayeo and my personal email is sweetonyetascience at gmail.com. And um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And I will see you guys in another video. Ache, ache, achito.